Hi everybody, let's finish up Philippians chapter 3 as we work through verse 12 down through the end of the chapter, verse 21. Uh, we've got to remember the context of chapter 3, where Paul has just talked about all the things that he could brag about. If he were putting his confidence in the flesh, he could brag about his pedigree, he could bra brag about his parentage, he could brag about his persecution uh, of the church, that he could brag about the fact that he was a Pharisee. He could brag about all sorts of things if his confidence was in the flesh. But the truth is, he gave all of that up so that he could share uh, in, in the sufferings of Christ, that he could know the power of Christ's resurrection through experiencing the sharing of his suffering, even if that meant suffering to the point of death. And so Paul very much is keeping the concept of dying for Christ right there at the forefront of his mind as he's sitting there in that jail cell, uh, probably dictating these letters to an amnuisist who's, who's able to write down the things that Paul's talking about and then uh, Timothy or Epaphroditus will be able to carry this letter over to the Philippians. Uh, Paul, in that context of being willing to die, where he says, my goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead, he goes on to say this, not that I have already reached the goal or am already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. This is a fairly well-known passage of Scripture, particularly there, verses 13 and 14. But in context, I'm not sure it always means what we try to say that it means. In the context here, Paul is talking about giving up the great accomplishments by human standards that he had attained, that uh, the fact that he was uh, of that great pedigree and had that great parentage, faithful parents, or faithful Jewish parent, and uh, he just had everything going for him. Well, that's what he's willing to leave behind, the good stuff by human standard. He forgets all of those bragging rights. He forgets all of those good things, and he reaches forward to the bad things that are ahead. Because you remember his goal is not just to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection, but to fellowship in Jesus' suffering and be conformed to Jesus' death. So here Paul is not saying we need to forget the bad stuff and reach forward to good things that are ahead. Paul's saying forget the good stuff by human standards and reach forward to the bad stuff by human standards because the bad things by human standards are very much the goal of what God has given us when we serve Christ. Now, this is so different than the way we typically think about this particular passage of Scripture. You know, Paul very clearly admits he's not reached the goal yet. Well, what's the goal? Dying. Being united with God, uh, he's going to pursue his goal, which is promised by the heavenly call. Uh, that Paul's goal is not necessarily to be set free, but to be triumphant over life because he is redeemed and resurrected by Jesus. You know, Paul hasn't gotten there yet, but he is making every effort to take hold of it. He wants to be with God again. He wants to have that great blessing of, uh, of joining God in heaven, of joining Jesus in heaven. And he says very clearly that anybody who is mature, anybody who is mature thinks that way. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I'm always thinking from a position of maturity. I think sometimes I think from a position of immaturity where 
I still have things I want to do in this life. I still have things that I want to accomplish. Uh, and there are times when I'm pretty positive that I think differently about all of this. And I think Paul, God, through Paul, is revealing that to me. We should desire to join God in heaven. We should desire to leave this world behind so that we can reach forward to what is ahead, which is the prize that is given to us when we come to Jesus in a way that Paul talks about, where we are willing to realize the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, even if that means being conformed to death. He goes on to say, join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have in us. For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is in their shame, and they are focused on earthly things. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly wait for a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. Again, keep this in context. Uh, make sure that we're not redefining things based on our human logic or our human desires. You know, Paul says here that those who define life through human desires, their end is destruction. The God is their stomach, their glory is their shame, and they're focused on earthly things. I wonder sometimes if the people that Paul was, is crying over here, that he's shedding tears for here, these enemies of the cross that he mentions here, is not talking about false teachers, it's not talking about those who are opposed to Jesus, but he's talking about those who claim to follow Jesus but are instead still focused on earthly things. People who are so focused on, on, on having more in this world, who are focused on fulfilling their stomach, uh, and I think by that we can expand that beyond just hunger and stomach to earthly possessions and earthly things and enjoying life from an earthly perspective. It's nothing wrong with eating. There's nothing wrong with having uh, a boat, or having a nice car. But when that becomes your focus, when that becomes your goal, when your goal is set on things of this earth, instead of set on things of Christ and Christ's kingdom, there's a problem. Truth is, our citizenship is in heaven. If we realize what Paul's saying here, he's saying you've got to not get attached to the things of this world because we belong somewhere else. We belong with our Savior, and that's why we wait for him. We belong with Jesus because he is our Lord. Uh, that's where we belong. We don't belong on this earth. We don't belong uh, to the things of this earth, that's not where our focus should be. Instead, our focus should be on him because he is the one who will transform our body from this humble position, humble condition. He will make give us a glorious body. Uh, he will bring us that resurrection we're looking for. Remember back in verse 10, my goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection. Well, that's what Paul's saying here. If we will leave behind the things of this world, if we will reject the things that the world has promised to us, if we will instead make it our goal to receive the prize, our goal is to experience the power of his resurrection. Our goal is for our humble condition to be transformed into a glorious body. Then we bring about the glory of God we show what it is that God has made possible. That should be the goal. That is what we're trying to accomplish if we're living like Paul.